Hi, Misha here, and this is a bit of a addendum to a previous video I did on the Japanese Navy's battleship Mutsu. And now we're going to talk about her and her big sister, Nagato. I said when I did the original video that the list I had showing the Eagle Moss ships left out number three, issue three. And this list was from an importer, and he said that issue three was never brought over to the U.S., so he wasn't sure what it was. Well, looking at the ships, the logical answer seemed to be that it would be Nagato, because it was the only missing battleship that they had. And I uh, found one and picked her up. So with that, I thought, plus the new camera, let's, uh, let's revisit, talk about the history. It's kind of neat because Mutsu here is in her original 1923 configuration, whereas Nagato is in her late war 1944 configuration. So we really can see how these uh, warships changed over their service. So yeah, let's just get into it. We'll use Mutsu here to talk about the beginnings of this class, just because it's in the 1920s configuration. The Nagato really dates back to the original 8-8 plan, in which the Japanese Navy wanted eight modern battleships and eight modern battle cruisers. And by 1915, give or take, early on in World War I, they were about halfway to that. They had four and four, with the Congos being the big features for the battle cruisers. And in 1916, the government allowed for one new battleship, even though the Navy wanted more. This would be Nagato. But then in 1917, the America began saber-rattling, threatening to build a large number of both battleships and battle cruisers. And therefore, funding was released to build three additional battleships. But only one would be built, Mutsu. So, Nagato was ordered in 1916, laid down in 19. 17, launched in 1919, and completed, commissioned in November of 1920. And she was a very big, very impressive ship. Japan was definitely trying to go for more of a quality over quantity approach, because they knew they could never outproduce America, but they were hoping maybe they could at least, you know, make very good ships and make it enough of a deterrent. She had a standard weight of over 32,500 tons with a fully loaded weight of 39,000 tons. She was 708 feet long and originally had a crew of about 1,330, although this would increase steadily throughout service. Nagato would also be the first battleship in the world commissioned with guns larger than 15 inches. To be exact, she had eight 16.1-inch main guns, two sets of Two, so a total of, you know, four front, four back, super firing. She also had 25.5 inch secondary guns, secondary batteries, plus a modest aircraft defense. And she had originally eight torpedo tubes. She would be capable of... 26 and a half knots at sea trials. It would quickly go into the fleet being a flagship. So even though she was 
ordered and laid down in World War I. Obviously, by the time she was in service, the war was over. As far as Mutsu, she was laid down in 1918, launched in 1920, and commissioned in late October of 1921, which is an important date because in November of 1921, the Washington Naval Conference was in session in which you had the U.S., Britain, and Japan, plus, of course, others would be signatories, France and Italy. And the, the sticking point was Nagato was a was a built ship, and the Japanese were arguing that Mutsu was also commissioned a month before the treaty. But the Allies wanted her to be scrapped because part of the part of the thing about the Washington Naval Treaty was scrapping any warships, basically any battleships under construction at the time. Japan just refused. They were not going to scrap Mutsu. She was the newest pride of the fleet, and they had a lot of prestige and honor in her. So in the end, a compromise was reached. Japan would keep Mutsu. She would scrap one of her older, obsolete dreadnoughts, and Britain could make what would become the Nelson class, Nelson and Rodney, and the U.S. could complete the Colorado class. So it wasn't strictly one-sided. So with that, Nagato and Mutsu were in the fleet, and one of the earliest things that Nagato did as flagship was host the Prince of Wales in 1922, and then in 1923, in September, both would take supplies and assist refugees after the Great Kanto Earthquake in Japan. And then in 1924, both would help sink the old dreadnought hulk Satsuma, fulfilling part of Japan's obligations with the naval treaty. From there, Nagato would be the flagship, 1925. However, in 1927, Mutsu would get some acclaim when Emperor Hirohito, the new emperor at the time, would use her as his flagship during a naval review, something he would do again in 1930. So he's kind of preferred, preferred Mutsu here. The ships would go in for a minor update. And also testing of aircraft facilities in the late 20s and early 30s. And then both would go in for a major refit between 1934 and 1936. So with that, let's look at the newest member mound fleet here. Issue 3, Nagato. Now this is as of 1944, but most of the changes would happen during this major refit. They would keep the eight 16-inch guns, although they would eventually pull two of the 5.5-inch, reducing the secondary battery to 18 guns. They would also, earlier on, remove half of the torpedo tubes, eventually removing all eight before World War II. They would increase the uh, crew to nearly 1,400 in the 1930s. But first they would reshape the bow here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, stop it. How would you do that? There we go. They would reshape the bow. And then they would also extend the stern. Both to help with speed and sea keeping. Giving it a new overall length of 738 feet. For both Mutsu and Nagato. They would also go away from the traditional mast to the pagoda style. They would give her updated lighter turbines. They would give her better torpedo protection by giving her better bulges. Now, to be fair, she did have torpedo protection from the beginning, and she was the first Japanese battleship to have the all-or-nothing armor scheme favored by America. 
but they would improve giving her added bulges and in these bulges they actually carry more oil giving her a longer range and many other updates besides she would gain quite a bit of weight going up to over 39,000 tons standard and over 46,500 tons full load. And because of age and just the, the new configuration, she would drop her top speed. Nagato would trial at just a hair under 25 knots at sea trials after her refit. Whereas Mutsu would come in at just a hair under 25 and a quarter knots. So Mutsu was just a little bit faster after these refits. Both ships were back in service by 1937. So that August they were used during the Second uh, Sino-Japanese War. They helped delivering troops to Shanghai and supporting other operations. And afterwards, Nagato would be turned into a training ship for a year, and then she would be once again assigned as the flagship of the fleet, and would undergo a uh, another brief refit before World War II. And with that, let's freehand it a bit again. Hope I'm getting something on camera for you here. Still kind of getting used to this one. Figuring out what does and doesn't work. Anywho. Both were very much in service in 1941. While the next evolution in Japanese battleships was coming with Yamato. And eventually her sister Musashi. These were not ready in 1941. Nagato was still the flagship of the Japanese Navy and as such Admiral Yamamoto actually gave the order to begin the war on board her on December 2nd. This is when the ships would actually eventually leave for the attack on Pearl Harbor December 7th by the American calendar, December 8th by the Japanese. Now, neither ship would actually do anything directly in Pearl Harbor. They would basically be on standby to provide support if needed. But they weren't, but they were in kind of a distant theater. And from there, really not much happened with them, to be honest. Both were again deployed at Midway, but by this time, Nagato was no longer flagship of the entire fleet. In February, Yam Yamoto would uh, take this mantle from her. Of course, Musashi would become the flagship in 1943 anyway. But they were basically just used for support ships and transport and what have you. And yeah, they were both there as part of the center force for Midway, but didn't do anything. And obviously did not save the four lost carriers. Uh, Admiral Yamamoto actually was hoping, kind of as a backup plan, to draw the American fleet out and maybe use his uh, battleships to attack the carriers and whatnot. But it never came to be, so it doesn't really matter. From that point, Musashi would see her only real combat, at least firing her guns in anger, that August. She would be used during the Guadalcanal campaign, and during the Battle of the Eastern Solomons, towards the end of August, she would fire her guns at reconnaissance planes, not really doing anything, but not really being damaged either. And from there, would... Um, basically kind of float around for a bit and then go back to home waters for training 
She was planned to go on operation in April of 43, but this was canceled. So, Mutsu would meet her end on June 8th, 1943, while at Anchorage in Japanese waters. An explosion would occur near or under the number three turret, breaking her in half. The front section of the ship, about two thirds, would go under quickly. The rear section, the stern, the rear third, would float for several hours, not sinking until the ninth. And since it was in harbor, not only was her crew on board, she uh, had dignitaries on board too. At this time, her crew was a little under 1,500. And of those, about 1,100 lost their lives. Uh, the Japanese really never figured out what happened. It was probably an accident, but they blamed a disgruntled sailor, and they very much made it a hush-hush thing. I mean, this was coming on the heels of Midway and the loss of Guadalcanal, and while Mutsu and Nagata weren't the pride of the fleet anymore, they were still next to Yamoto and Musashi, their most modern, modern, modern battleships. And I mean, 16 inch guns are still nothing to sneeze at. By the way, during their refit, they would increase the range of the guns, installing turrets from the canceled Toza class battleships. They were canceled because of the Washington Naval Treaty. So they increased their uh, effective range from about 30,000 meters out to about 36,000. But Mutsu never really received radar, although she was operating three reconnaissance float planes towards the end of her career. But yeah, she uh, exploded in harbor. The surviving crew were dispersed throughout the Japanese Navy and encouraged very strongly to um, not say anything. And it would actually be quite a while before they would admit on the Naval Registry that she was lost. And it would be quite some time before the Allies realized she was gone too. So even though they really fought to have Mutsu in the Japanese Navy, truly they never ended up doing much with her. She was only really in active combat once, although she was on standby several times, and she never really had any interactions to speak of. Just kind of giving a general history. Obviously there's more details if you want to dig into it, but... Yeah, I don't know. She's often overshadowed by the later battleships and of course the carriers but I've always thought that Nagato and Mutsu were quite interesting and speaking of Nagato her career was actually far from over after Midway Nagato more or less spent her time in home waters training just kind of being auxiliary although she was used for a troop transport and she would move around a bit in uh in May of 43, she would get her first radar set. Maybe better late than ever. Who knows? She would move around a little bit, really not doing much. She would be a truck, but she would leave there in February of 1944 to evade an Allied bombing raid. And she would be briefly resupply and refit in Singapore. And then she would be deployed for the Battle of the Philippine Sea in June 1944. Her job was to escort the remaining carriers. Which, um, well, anyway. She was attacked a few times, but very little damage was done. And she escaped the battle in much better shape than other Japanese naval vessels. And afterwards, at the end of June, she would go back in for a refit, receiving two more radars. Increasing her ability, to be sure. 
She's still operating float planes. And from there, she would just kind of shuttle around for the rest of the summer. And then she would be called upon for the Battle of Leyte Gulf in October. On the way there, on the 24th, she was hit by a couple of bombs. They did some damage, but not, not enough to put her out of action. On the uh, 25th, she would be attempted to, 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 blah, attempted to be torpedoed. But she would evade the torpedoes, and this would be the only time Nagata would fire her guns in anger at the rather famous group Taffy 3. But she wouldn't do any damage. Even when she would try again, she just her accuracy was pretty piss poor. Probably a combination of lack of practice and insufficient radars for targeting, and they have to be said the weather wasn't um, very cooperative. The Americans did much better because they were able to kind of get through the poor weather with the much more advanced radar targeting systems. And towards the end, she would again be hit by a couple of 500-pound bombs, and this time it would do some noticeable damage. Not enough to sink her, even come close, but enough that in November she had to go back to Yakuzuka for repair. However... By the time she got there, Japan really didn't have the resources to repair her or the fuel to keep her going. What they had left was pretty much being devoted to, um, well, the remaining carriers such as they were, and I guess Yamamoto, I mean uh, Yamato, for whatever she was good. But by this point, late 1944, yeah. So what they ended up doing, she was kind of parked in a near harbor and converted into an anti-aircraft battery. They would uh, cut down her mast and her funnel. They would add more AA guns, but since many of them were the 25 millimeter, eh, yeah, not great. And she would poke around the harbor for a bit throughout 1945, eventually being put into the reserve fleet that April, and then later having a lot of her equipment transferred onto land and her crew reduced to about 900, 950. At this point, she doesn't even really have much power. She's receiving quite a bit of power through a support vessel. She doesn't have any fuel oil, and a lot of the damage from Leyte Gulf is still either not repaired or at least hastily patched. And then, as the Allies drew in close and wanted to wipe out their remaining Japanese fleet, on July 18, she was hit by a couple more bombs, doing yet more damage. And the Japanese actually kind of flooded her and sunk her quite low in the water, hoping the Americans would think that she was literally done for. In reality, while she was damaged, she wasn't completely out of the fight. And there were plans to kind of get her back up and fighting that August. And they even started to kind of re-equip her, but before that, the war would end. Thus, Nagato would survive the war. In fact, she was the only Japanese battleship to survive World War II, and one of the few major capital ships. U.S. sailors from USS Iowa would take... Uh, command of her on August 30th and would quickly report that she was in deplorable condition and morale with her sailors was essentially non-existent. She was quite old at this point, had not had a major refit in far too long. Most of her skilled sailors were either transferred off or dead. Her equipment had not been maintained at all and again damage and everything. So what do they do with her? Well, they use her for a nuclear test in 1946, and they barely got her over to Bikini Atoll for that. She was listing and nearly went under a couple of times, but they got her there. And uh, they stationed her there that May, and then testing began in July of 1946, and she would survive the first test in 
remarkably intact, but then the next test, an underwater test, which was done much closer, would hit her with an artificial uh, typhoon, tsunami, what have you. And this would pretty much stress the hull to its breaking point. And she would begin to list more and more, taking on water. She was also highly radioactive at this time, finally going under the waves between July 29 and July 30th that night. Thus ending her career. So interestingly, neither of these ships was actually destroyed by the Allies. This one essentially destroyed itself, was lost to an accident, and this one was lost to a very non-accident accident. And there you have a brief rundown of kind of the two big battleships Japan had of World War I period, much like Yamato and Musashi had the big guns for their day, 18 point one inch these had the big guns for their day and they were very large battleships by world war one standards and 26 knots was quite fast by world war one standards as well of course by world war two they were quite dated but still if battleships had been more important in that war could have been effective but the truth is even yamoto was not all that important And much like with a lot of big battleships, they just didn't know what to do with them. So they didn't do much of anything with them. So they sucked up a lot of resources and time and personnel. But from a historical standpoint, it's quite neat to have these models. And they did a good job of making Nagato and her late war guys quite uh, different from Mutsu. And it's nice to know what issue 3 was, and frankly that I was right. And nice to kind of have all the Japanese battleships now. There really weren't that many if you think about it. Quite a few cruisers and what have you. But Japan didn't make all that many battleships. And when they did, they tried to go very advanced. I mean, 16-inch guns were very respectable, even by World War II standards. So, yeah. Just thought I would share and revisit. Why not? I was very pleased that uh, Nagato came in. She actually came in early. About two weeks early, which is a nice change on shipping from International, because I had to get these from China again. So with that, I thought, why not do a video? Well, folks, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please do post them. And as always, if you could, like, share, subscribe, and all that, uh, all that good stuff. <laughs> this is Misha. Catch you very soon. Next time.